Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to use a Garmin Nuvi 1300, 1350, 1390, 1400, 1450 and 1490 GPS. So basically the GPS looks like this and uh, the only difference between the 1300 and 1400 series is the screen size. The software and all the settings are exactly the same. Okay, so when you turn on the GPS, this is the first screen that you will be getting. Uh, first, before you proceed uh, and enter an address or something, we have to do certain settings in the GPS to make sure it will need, uh, it will meet our needs. Okay, so you go to Tools and go to Settings. Go to Systems, and here you have to choose uh, kilometers or miles based on the country that you're living in. For example, for United States, you have to choose miles. For any other country in the world, you have to choose kilometers. It's important to choose the correct uh, uh, unit of measurements because if you choose miles in a country, let's say in, in Europe, uh, and all the signs, street signs, are written in kilometers. The speed limits are written in kilometers. And if you choose miles, the GPS will display miles on the screen, and giving you that will give you false or difficult to understand speed limit. And if you are violating the speed limit, so it's good to write the use the correct unit of measurements. All right. So GP, GPS simulator always leave it off. It's not a good idea to turn it on because it's, it will turn off the actual satellite reception and it will s simulate its position. Usually it's only good if the car is going through a very large tunnel uh, or a large underground street where uh, there is no GPS signal. If it's doing the simulation, it's fine. But uh, under normal circumstances, the GPS simulator should be off. Usage mode is very important. If you're driving a car, it has to be automobile. But if you are a pedestrian, you have to choose pedestrian. Uh, by choosing pedestrian, the GPS will avoid places where pedestrians cannot go. For example, uh, uh, the GPS might take you uh, through uh, sidewalks, uh, trails, uh, footpaths, uh, and other places, but it will never take you to streets, it will never take you to highways, and etc. If you choose a bicycle, it, the GPS will take you to every street except those where bicycles are not allowed. For example, by choosing bicycles, the GPS will never take you to highways or freeways. If you're in Europe, it will never take you to autobahns, where the uh, uh, presence of bicycles are illegal in autobahns, just like it is in the United States and the freeways. Okay, so let's see. Okay, this Q-W-E-R-T-Y is the layout of the keyboard. This is the, the, way, uh, uh, the way that you're used to in your computer. If you choose A, B, C, D, then the alphabet will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, which is very difficult. I recommend choosing Q-W-E-R-T-Y, okay? So you go back. Now, navigation. In navigation, there are two types of preferences. Uh, uh, you could say, uh, I'm sorry, there's more than two, four types of preferences. Uh, faster time, shortest distance, less fuel, off-road. So if you choose faster time, the GPS will take you through the fastest route time-wise, but it could be a longer one uh, distance-wise. For example, it will avoid small streets with m multiple uh, traffic lights, and it will take you through a, a freeway, uh, even though the actual street uh, road distance is much longer on the freeway but it will save you time it will take you there shortest distance is the shortest actual distance from point a to point b uh, not taking in consideration the time so this is not that good because uh, it will take you through red lights and traffic lights and small streets uh, and it will not actually save you time uh, shortest distance is not a good idea the only time shortest distance is good if you're renting a vehicle from a car rental place and you are paying for every single mile you're driving 
uh, then uh, it will save you a lot of mileage if you choose shortest distance. Less fuel. If you choose less fuel, the GPS will take you through places where it doesn't have too many ups and downs. It's basically flat terrain, saving you gas and fuel efficiency increases. Off-road, it will take you to places uh, where uh, you cannot choose off-road if you have a, a low profile vehicle such as uh, like a sports vehicle. Um, it's good if you have a four-wheel drive, it's good if you have a, a SUV sport ut utility vehicle or other kinds of any terrain vehicle but it's not good for vehicles where you know like small sedans you could get stuck if you go to use off-roading and stuff. Anyways I hope this is clear so I always like to choose faster time and that is actually the default selection by Garmin. Okay so avoidance is very important. People take this for granted and they don't set it up. This is extremely important. Avoidance, uh, every box that you check in the avoidance to, uh, selection, that is the box that it will avoid. For example, let me tell you, if you choose U-turns, it will never take you to routes where a U-turn is required. You're probably going to ask, why is having a U-turn so difficult? The reason for that is uh, because what if you are driving a bus? What if you're driving a semi-truck? What if you're driving a... a RV that's like 30 foot long, you cannot make U-turns easily. So that's why if you are driving a large, long vehicle, you have to choose this option to avoid U-turns, okay? Now, highways. This is only good if you're drive, uh, riding a bicycle to avoid highways because bicycles are not allowed in highways. So you need to avoid highways and check this box. Toll roads, if you're always traveling alone, uh, I, I apologize, that's carpool lanes. The toll roads, is uh, you have to pay money. So if you don't want to spend money uh, in your commute every day, you have to avoid the toll roads. Traffic uh, is only valid if you have a traffic receiver. If you don't have a traffic receiver, the GPS will never know which route has less traffic. Ferries, you know that, you know, little boats that take the car. Uh, you that, there, There's a lot of ferries in European countries. There aren't very many in, in, in the United States. However, there are a few places where the ferries are common, but not everywhere, though. So this is something which is common in Scandinavian countries and European countries. All right, so carpool lanes. If you're traveling alone, you want to avoid carpool lanes. You don't want to get a ticket. It's the most expensive ticket if you're violating a carpool lane. And unpaved roads are basically another name for dirt roads, which is only good if your vehicle can handle, uh, like... Uh, uh, terrain with the tons of rocks and ditches and um, and whatnot so that's a good thing to avoid all right okay so let's go back this is not enabled so uh, we're gonna go back this is this will only be enabled if you choose pedestrian see for example if you go to navigation let's see system if I choose this pedestrian okay and go back and then go to navigation then uh, okay so even at this it's not enabled because the transit types is like if you want to choose buses or trolleys and whatnot so even at, uh, at in pedestrian mode it's not going to be enabled so I'm going to go back to automobile and go back to navigation so we explained everything now we're going to go to display display is usually 40 percent that's the brightness uh, but you can, you know, choose it up and down. Uh, this is daytime. This is nighttime. Everything goes dark. And, you know, the GPS will behave like this. See, that's how some people like it that way. So, I don't know. I like it nice and bright. So, I usually like the display to be in uh, daytime. Or you could choose auto. If you choose auto or automatic, it will automatically go to darkness when it's dark. And it will go to brightness when it's daylight. So it's good to choose automatic if you want to have both options. Okay, so that was the uh, display mode. Uh, daytime, nighttime, or automatic. Now if brightness is 40%. You can change that based on your preferences. Screenshot is disabled, but screenshot is a, uh, an option to take a picture of the screen uh, of wherever you are uh, for as a JPEG image, as a photo, so that you could you know see the map or the terrain in that area and whatnot so it's currently disabled but you can enable it 
okay okay uh, uh, gps uh, and a, on a gps you don't set up the time you only choose the time zone it will automatically detect the time from the satellites so uh, the current time is uh, 252 a.m. because this GPS set to a different time zone where I'm at right now Pacific time it's like 1052 so if I click here and I choose automatic see it chose 1052 because it detects where it's at and it will automatically adjust the time accordingly okay language obviously you want to choose the correct language now see every language that has a name of a speaker next to it for example uh, it says American English, but then it says American English dash Jack or American English dash uh, Jill. When you have an, a name associated to that language, that means it will speak the names of the streets. So it's vo uh, uh, voice uh, to text or uh, uh, they call it uh, text to speech. I apologize. Text to speech or TTS. So, uh, for example, if I choose Jack, I'm going to choose Jack. If I turn, uh, if I'm supposed to turn right on Broadway, it will not tell me turn right. It will tell me turn right on Broadway. It will speak the name of the street. Where in this se settings, it will not speak the name of the street. It will just say turn right or turn left. Jack and Jill will pronounce or speak the name of the street. Now, this is true with uh, different languages. For example, if you choose Paulina, uh, it will speak the name of the street in Spanish language or Julie in French language. So whatever language you choose, if you choose the language with the name of a speaker next to it, they will speak the name of the street, which is called TTS or text to speech technology. Okay, so text language is American English, keyboard language, you can change all these things you can change. The, now keyboard language, you would probably say if I'm an English speaker, why would I change the keyboard language? Well, you'll be surprised. In some countries, the alphabet is different. And if you want to enter an address, you may not have that, that particular alphabet uh, that you need uh, for that uh, person's uh, address or person's house or, or points of interest or whatnot. So it's good to choose the correct language. For example, uh, uh, let's say if you, if you go to Russia, let's say, uh, they have uh, uh, different. If you go to a uh, different uh, alphabet, if you go to... Uh, Let's see what other language is different. Greek, for example. Greek languages, Hebrew is different. Uh, Hungarian is different alphabet. Some, some alphabetical letters uh, have dots on the top. So you need to choose the correct language. Now, text language is not the same as keyboard language. Text language is the language of the menus. For example, restore is written in English, right? So text language, if I change the text language, let's say I change the text language to... Um, let's say Fr Francis okay now even okay will change and cancel will change to Fr French so see for example uh, cancel is annulaire in French so uh, I don't speak French so I'm gonna go back to American English and choose American English and uh, again it cha changed to cancel okay so I hope that's easy to remember all right so I'm gonna go back now I'm going to go to map. Map is very important to know uh, because uh, the map uh, detail is very important. Map detail should be most detail. I don't like minimum detail. I like most detail, not normal. Most is what I like because it shows more streets. Uh, the other one will hide some of the small streets. The map view is 3D or you could choose north up or you could choose uh, uh, direction that you're traveling up. So three options. Track up means where, wherever you're headed will be shown on top of the screen. If you choose north up, wherever you're heading, north will show on top of the screen. 3D will be three-dimensional. So look at the image, how it changes. North up will be like that. 3D will be like that. Track up will be like that, which happens to be also north. So that's why I like 3D, and that's the one I recommend. Okay? So, the vehicle you can change, this is nothing important, changing a vehicle, you can choose a different car if you like to. I mean, for, for adults traveling, this is not a big deal, but if you're a teenager, obviously the most important thing is to choose a cool vehicle for yourself. Anyways, so that's that, and the uh, trip log will show, this is very important if you're going to a place where you have no clue where you're going. 
the trip log will show a blue line of where you have been traveling and it will highlight the blue line on the screen on the display uh, which will uh, kind of uh, guarantees or uh, uh, that you don't go in circles but not guarantee what I'm trying to say is it will warn you or inform you if you're going in circles uh, because it will tell you you know what where you are driving you've been here before uh, so it's good and bad because uh, the reason it's bad is like uh, it, it's a little confusing because on top of the roads and streets you will have another blue line so I like it to be hidden all right so let's see what else is here okay map data layout standard is good but if you choose more information more data then you will have more data like uh, it shows uh, more uh, uh, items that you don't want to see so let me let me actually show you what I mean so if I'm looking at the map this is the amount of information I have speed is zero facing north and whatnot so this information and this information is displayed but if I go here to the map and I choose more data and click OK and go back to the map so now I have elevation information I have the time information I have the speed and I have the driving direction I don't need all this I want a bigger map so if you do need these informations uh, these pieces of information in your screen which is occupying a good 25 percent 30 percent of the screen then you can enable it but if you don't then go here go to settings go to map scroll down map layout and choose standard standard is the best that's what uh, Garmin recommends you know about security if you want to lock the GPS if you choose Garmin lock you better be careful because if you forget that the uh, pin you can never use your GPS unless you come back to the same exact geographical spot where you set the password because Garmin lock Will, co will only be activated if you have clear satellite signal. You cannot set up the Garmin lock from inside your house without a clear satellite signal. If you're outside and you're setting up a Garmin lock uh, in your car somewhere that you don't even remember and you forget the pin, the GPS is trash. If you set it, if you want to set it, set it up at your house. Because if you forget the pin, when you come back to your house, the GPS coordinates, the longitude and latitude for your house will automatically unlock the Garmin without remembering the pin. I don't recommend locking the GPS with Garmin lock because it's just one more factor of trouble. If a thief is about to steal your GPS from your car, he doesn't care if it has Garmin lock or not. He's going to steal it. So it's more headache for yourself to enable Garmin lock. What's safe mode? Safe mode is something very important. If you turn it off, you can operate the GPS even when you're driving. If you turn it on, you cannot operate the GPS if you're driving. The GPS will detect motion that you are in driving mode and the vehicle is in motion and it will not allow you to enter a map, enter an address or anything. I like it off because I'm a safe driver. But if you're uh, new at driving and you think you're a riskier driver uh, and with less experience, it's good to turn it on. Okay? Let's see, did I forget anything? No. That's it. Oh, okay. <coughs> now we're going to go uh, about uh, map information. Go to Tools, Settings, Map. If you look here, uh, in the map information at the bottom, uh, where it says Info, this will tell you which map is loaded in this GPS. So this GPS, ha it has the latest North American map, which is 2018.2. At this time, it's the latest, when this video was shot. So if you're watching this video a year later, it's not the latest. Now, if I have multiple maps, let's say I have European maps and North American maps and whatnot. By checking this box and, and unchecking the box, I turn and off different maps. It's recommended to turn off the maps that you're not using because it's it will save you uh, important resources uh, for your uh, GPS to operate uh, much faster. For example, if I enable this and I enable European map, the GPS will run a lot slower because it has to load all those maps. So I, my recommendation is to disable those maps that you're not using. I'm using uh, North American map and I don't even have other maps, so I'm okay. But if I did, I would disable the other maps. If you did have more maps, it will appear right here, one after another, and you will have arrows here to scroll up and down if you have more than five or six maps. Okay? 
so now we will go to how to operate this to operate to an address you go where to and then you punch in the address wherever you want to for example if you want to change the country you change the country enter the name of the country if you want to uh, uh, navigate by zip code you enter postal code and uh, if you want to search you just click search and it will give you all the options so for example if you know the city you're going starts with C but you don't remember what was the exact name of the city then what you do is spell city you click spell city and then you click C because you don't remember what was the next letter you click done so it will bring every city that starts with a, with a C it will be a whole bunch of cities it will be probably hundreds of cities that will start with C see I'm 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 scrolling like four or five times I'm still with CA imagine we have CE CR but what not so so that's why it's good to have at least two three letters of that city to narrow down the search so let's say if it's Calexico for example the city is Calexico and I'm gonna put C A L and then done and, and there you go it says Calabasas Calexico and whatnot California City California and whatnot okay so now this is all the cities in California because see I didn't change the state if I'm going to a different state let's say I'm going to New York in a, in a different different state spell state so I'm gonna go to New York NY done Oh, see, there's, it says no matches because I put the abbreviation. You cannot put the abbreviation. You cannot put the abbreviation. Uh, let's see. So, uh, what I'm going to do is put New York N-E-W. There you go. So now we have all the uh, states that start with new which is New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York. Now I'm going to choose New York. And now, from again, I can choose the name of the city. So let's say I'm going to New York, New York. Then I'm going to put new, N, E, and then done. And it will give me any all the cities that start with N, E. And then we just go down and you find New York, New York. There you go. It's probably the last ones. There you go. There, New York City, New York. Then you choose from there. So this is, in case you don't know, the exact... Uh, if you don't know the exact uh, uh, spelling of the city you're going to. Okay? Alright. So that's that. Going home is obviously easy. You just press go home. It will take you there. You have to enter your home address or, you know, choose from recent places. Now, here's something very important. When you go to a foreign country, you don't know the, the address. So what you do is you create favorite spots. For example, let's say I'm here in a foreign country in this area. I don't even know what this place is. So I click this and I, and I, I click wherever like I click this place right here I click this right there you see the arrow there so and then I can save the spot a, as point of interest and then I could give it a name let's say I'm gonna say I'm gonna save this spot right here hold on okay I'm gonna save that spot I'm gonna click save and now save to favorites now if I go to favorites if I go to where to and I go to favorites so this is the favorite that I saved you can edit the favorite you can rename it uh, so you know you know you could do all kinds of goodies with the favorites recently found you could do that and and then you could also clear let's see I'm going to show you how to clear uh, my data delete favorites select all delete okay uh, delete selected routes no data found okay clear trip log yes so now if I go to favorites where to favorites there is no data but if I go to the map and and choose a spot let's say that spot 
this spot right here and add that spot to my favorites you could save it give it a name let's say you say give it a name and say the hotel I'm staying at hotel okay so I, I wrote hotel uh, space I am uh, I hotel I am space staying so hotel I'm staying let's say you're in some foreign country you don't even know the language let's say you're in an uh, oriental country where uh, all the alphabet is different and you cannot even type that uh, particular uh, alphabet this is how you memorize the hotel where you're staying so now you click on done and that place is saved to favorites the hotel I'm staying at you know uh, so I, this is I'm just choosing a point in the map this doesn't this is not accurate I'm just this is just to teach you guys so um, that's how we do it now uh, this is very important because if you are going to a foreign country the first thing you want to do as soon as you get to the airport you have to memorize the location of the airport when you get to your hotel memorize the location of your hotel and you have to do it when you have full GPS signal see I don't even have full G GPS signal so this memorization is not good because you need to have like f at least four bars to memorize because this memorization is not even accurate because my location is not accurate on the map because I don't have I'm indoors I'm not outdoors so that's the thing all right so so that's uh, how to enter points of interest or the places where you could go to like you could spell the name you could go to food fuel shopping lodging transit and uh, you know uh, banks uh, uh, parking places entertainment and whatnot let's say you're fi trying to find a parking uh, you just go to let's say you're traveling around and there is no parking place you're in the middle of nowhere in a foreign country you go where to you go point of interest okay so you go point of interest and then you scroll down and you go parking so it's gonna search search for parking so this one is probably five miles away so I'm gonna click go and it's gonna take me to the Grossman Center parking so for now obviously I'm not going there so that's how we do it tourist attractions recreation hospitals in case of emergency if you have to go banks and ATMs all these points of interest uh, are important community places um, auto services and whatnot so points of interest is very important if you don't know the name of the let's say you want to go to Starbucks this is an example you go to points of interest you go to spell name and right here type Starbucks done now it's gonna search all the Starbucks close to me watch it search all the Starbucks so there it is so those are the Starbucks uh, that are close to me so let's say I want this one I could go there and just click go and it will navigate you to the Starbucks so I'm gonna go back because I'm not in the mood for a coffee right now okay so intersection uh, okay that was points of interest so recently found are places where you have been to before so if you forgot to punch in and, and memorize to favorites your address of your hotel or your airport or whatnot you could go to recently found and go and navigate there again but the recently found will get complicated because you will have the list grows as you as you use the GPS the recently found list will grow longer and longer and bigger and before you know it you cannot find you cannot tell where which one is which but favorites you can name each one like if I go to favorites right now I wrote hotel I'm staying it, I should have said the hotel I'm staying at but here we are not doing English grammar test this is just so you guys learn how to use the GPS so this is just like try to do it as, sh as short as possible I should have written my hotel you know so but here's just just a tip how to do it so intersection many countries especially in Central America 
there are no addressing system like it is in the United States. You have to enter the two crossing, the two intersections, which are the two crossing roads. You have to enter, enter the name of this road and this road, and it will get you there. So this is the intersection uh, uh, which, which you want to find. For example, now we are in New York City. You have to enter, uh, uh, so New York City, and then you have to ent uh, enter the name of the first street and then the second street so so let's say I want New York City okay so first street street one let's say it's Broadway okay Broadway there you go Broadway entrance road street number two fourth Avenue Okay, Fourth Avenue exit. So, Fourth Avenue exit. No, so Broadway doesn't cross Fourth Avenue. That's trying to tell me. So you have this is like I'm just guessing. So Fourth North, no matches. So this is because I'm just guessing. That's why Broadway. I, I have to know. It has to be a real. That's why it, it doesn't exist because I'm just guessing. Fourth and Broadway, maybe it doesn't exist on, in New York City. Maybe it's in a different city. So, anyways. Okay. So, uh, cities, you could choose cities, routes. Uh, you could, okay. Browse map is an interesting one. Let's see, did I cover intersection? Yes, I covered intersection. Extras is extra things you can buy from Garmin. It's, n it's not included. Cities, you choose a city and you go to that city. It's like, you know, Spring Valley, Rancho, Lemon Grove, La Prisa, all the cities close to me is listed there. Okay? Routes. You could choose a route that you have chosen before, which I don't have any. Okay? Browse map is a good one because you browse map, you go like this and go like that and, and just like searching for places. For example, I see this beautiful lake here close to my house and I want to go as close as possible to the lake. So what I do is I, I browse it. I browse it like this and then I click right here see that the, that's the closest I can get to the lake so I go I either save it or I click go if I click go it will navigate me to the place where the lake is so basically you look at your surrounding and choose a spot you want to go to that's the browse map uh, option coordinates is very important Co coordinates is also important for places where the addressing system is not very good that's when coordinates come in handy the coordinates have four options, either north and west or south and east. So north could be either north or south and west could be west or east. And uh, you enter the number and then the two other numbers and then the three last numbers, which is degrees, minutes and seconds, I believe. And you enter those. Uh, this is the longitude and latitude of the planet. Like this is the planet and you have all those lines and it gives you the exact address of each spot on the planet. It's very important to use it in countries where they don't have good addressing. I used it once in Italy because I didn't speak Italian and the, uh, the address for... Uh, the name of each street was so long it was like a sentence, the name of a street. So I asked the hotel where I was staying if they could give me their GPS coordinates. They gave me the coordinates, I entered those numbers and it navigated me exactly to the hotel door. So that's very good to use coordinates. It saves you a lot of headache if you don't speak the language or if you're not familiar with that city. Okay, so these are all the things we covered. Now we're going to go to tools. And tools, you can create a route. You can, uh, where am, am I at? It tells you where you are. Economical route uh, gives you the route that saves you energy or fuel. Picture viewer, you can view the pictures. My data, you can clear the data. World clock, you could see what time in different cities are, like this one tells you what time it is in Tokyo, London, New York, and whatnot. You could add more cities. You could choose world map and see which where you're at and choose a country, tells you what time in that country it is. And a calculator, simple, you know, just a simple calculator. Unit converter is important because we are used to, like, uh, uh, units of measurement, American system, but all the world is standard metric. So this will tell you how many, like, if I want to know how many kilometer one mile is, so I go here, 
and I choose mile actually I conversion okay so I need to choose distance I don't need area I need to choose distance so millimeters I change it to kilometers okay and uh, how many kilometer will become a mile let's choose mile so I'm gonna put one mile equals to 1.6 kilometers like that all right so it's good it's come comes in handy comes in handy okay and language guide is also something that you have to purchase from Garmin they don't actually include it so this is a volume control mute and amount of volume you want to put it in and basically that's it I hope you learned something and you enjoyed oh by the way if you want to know the signal strength you put your hand on the signal and don't let go put it there and it tells you the signal strength how many satellites and how many bars you have it's good to know the signal strength and uh, yeah basically that's what it is I hope you enjoyed this video I hope uh, this video was educational and you learned something uh, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching